Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Catalyst Energies. My name is Dee. Thank you for joining me. I'm so grateful that you're here. This is the Daily Medicine Transmission for May 4th, 2021. May the 4th be with you. And today our moon is in Aquarius. It's going to move into Pisces. We are going to um, come into astronomical Beltane um, very late tonight into early tomorrow morning. So the 5th of May, 5.5, we have Beltane. So we're going to talk about that. We'll talk a lot more about that tomorrow. Um, I've been talking a lot about that just in general, and especially because um, it was part of this last lunar quarter. So I talked about it in the astrology report, the weekly astrology report, which you can find on the platform that you're watching this video on. So either YouTube or BitChute or Subscribestar, all of those platforms have the weekly astrology report where I talk about Beltane, its significance, what it means, and what to expect as this lunar cycle wraps up and we come into a new moon on the 11th in Taurus, which is really, really, really going to test our uh, our faith and uh, promises in some ways to bring us um, a white dove of hope and peace if we are really steadfast in our faith and our trust in these cycles as they're playing out. So how's everyone doing? Um, Welcome back to my uh, subscribers. Um, you truly are the lifeblood of this channel. So those who are supporting me on Subscribestar, BitChute, and YouTube, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. And if you're new here, welcome. Uh, thanks for dropping by. If you really find this content helpful, inspiring, then you can really support the channel by interacting with the content in some way. And I am actually really curious how people are feeling the last couple of days because um, it's been it's been intense. I've had a few people reach out and just mention how intense I find it really intense and incredibly distracting actually um, it feels to me that the veil is very thin and um, that for me personally and everybody's experience of this is going to be different um, especially because the Schumann resonance is um, consistently peaking at higher and higher frequencies and I'll show you that I'm going to show you an image here real quick so that you know usually uh, shows that the the heartbeat of the planet herself um, is emitting a much higher frequency of electromagnetic energy uh, just like our own heart does we have our heart is an electrical pump right and so when it um, beats faster and uses more energy it also emits a higher frequency uh, electromagnetic field. And what does that even mean? A frequency is really a measurement of how many wavelengths per cycle of time. And so the more, uh, the higher a frequency, then there's more wavelengths within a cycle of time, which means the energy output of that um, electromagnetic radiation is higher, right? And that's what that means. And so the when the Schumann gets up and starts peaking in 60, 70, 80, 90 hertz, um, when it normally is between 7 and 8 hertz, you know that the heartbeat of the planet is really active and is putting out a considerable amount of electromagnetic um radiate well the field is getting um more substantial it is uh oscillating at a much higher frequency which suggests that it could be in response to something it could be creating a field around the planet in order to protect it um and so that you know people have a lot of symptoms when this kind of happens and when you're still operating on when you're you can tell when you are starting to align with these higher frequencies on a regular basis because you go from a time where, you know, when the Schumann starts to spike like that, you get headaches, ringing in the ears, all kinds of different physical symptoms that will really tire you out and force you to um, really physically take a break and a rest because you are your body has to align with the frequency. Now, when you're operating at that level on a regular basis because of your own work, your own energetic work, your own spiritual work, um, and so that you are, right, you're, you, you have a daily practice of meditation or energy work, you know, Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga, something, anything, exercise, anything that is going to consistently 
create that container for a higher frequency, um, your own field being at a higher frequency on a regular basis. When the Schumann spikes, it is euphoric. It is, um, it, but it also can be very distracting because it also brings you to a state that is where um, a higher dimensional state on a regular basis. And so when you come off when you come off the spikes, it tends to be um, a time where you kind of bottom out a little bit. And it, a lot of people needed a lot of rest over the weekend. And I'm just curious how people are doing. I find it incredibly distracting to have to um, interface with multiple timelines at the same time, because that's definitely what I'm experiencing, multiple dimensions, multiple timelines in a very visceral way um, that's, that is seeping through. And it's kind of hard sometimes to know what actually is more real. So I'd be curious to see how people are feeling. And, you know, with the moon moving from Aquarius into Pisces today, as well as we are about to enter Beltane, the halfway point between the equinox and the solstice, when the seed bursts open and that new life starts to push its way up from the darkness, um, there is a reason why we are being um why why we are being uh impacted in this way either the either the 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 earth herself who's already made this transition by the way um into fifth dimension is almost modulating this experience for us you know getting us into that state um as gently as possible that you know as much as that she can do bringing us up to speed with um the higher um frequency radiation of the electromagnetic field in you know in connection to us it's just been distracting um, and also really intense, you know, some people have been rendered immobile through, um, various, various ways in order to keep you and to keep us really focused in on what is happening energetically within us. Um, some pe one person yesterday uh, reached out and mentioned that they just felt like they were going to explode. And I feel like that if I hadn't taken the time to sleep all weekend and just drop out when my body told me to, I probably feel that way too, because what's happening is, like I said, it's this overlay of multiple timelines and dimensions that are all kind of, co they're almost like coalescing with each other. And it can be really distracting to stay focused and grounded on what's happening in, you know, real time right now. So I would be curious to see how people are responding as we are moving through this incredibly potent time. So we're going to look at the chart. Um, there's a lot of fixed star energy today that I want to bring up. And then uh, we'll, of course, as always, look at the reading um, and get some because it's it, there's a lot of water in today's transmission. Um, there is a lot of emotional flow. Um, no, come back. There's a lot of emotional flow. There is a lot of emotion in general. There is intuition. There is a. Uh, um, deep feelings, um, dreams. Once the, a dark moon in Pisces, as it's getting darker and darker coming into Pisces tonight and tomorrow, like the dreams, look at your dreams. They're going to be, um, very significant. And I also do feel like that right now, because the veil is so incredibly thin, there is a lot of potential in this moment for people to really pull in or allow to stick, um, things that are not really meant to be here. So it's, again, it's important that your energetic hygiene is really on point right now. And so um, getting the energy work that you need done, doing the Reiki on yourself or other people, um, you know, cord cutting is something that can be done by a master, a shaman, um, things like that. And people who have mastered their energy, their own energetic um, container and hygiene and are able to do that work for other people. That's important, too, because sometimes we pick up things in the astral that we are not really aware of and they are siphoning our energy or they are um, distracting us. And they, you know, a lot of the elemental stuff is coming in really strongly, too. So just be mindful of that as we go through. So let's look at this chart for today. So we have, like I said, um, the moon or the sun in 
in Taurus, you know, coming up onto Beltane where the seed cracks open. I've talked so much about this, so I would really recommend just going back and listening to the astrology report to get a full overview of what that represents because um, it's no small feat, you know, for the seed to crack open and this new life to start um, emerging from the depths up into the sunlight. We do have Mercury now in um, in its home territory of Gemini. This is a big deal. Um, it's in conjunction with fixed star Alcyon, which is kind of the last star of the Pleiades star cluster. Venus is now coming into um, conjunction with the Pleiadian star cluster as well. And so there's um, a lot of connection here to the Pleiades, to those star seeds, um, those beings and what they represent, which is a heart centered connection, which is um, being directly connected to the rhythm of the planet herself. This is why the Pleiadians love this place because it's so... Um, it's so easy um, to have this direct connection to the planet because Gaia really is the heart chakra of our solar system. And the Pleiadian star seed, the most prominent trait is functioning and operating from an open heart chakra and connected physically and energetically connected place. And that is a very Taurus archetype as well. And so Venus, um, as the divine feminine incarnate, the great mother, you know, and attracts to her what she, what she needs and desires and what feels good. You know, Taurus is about our senses. And so she's coming into the Pleiadian aspect as well as, and Mercury is now finishing its transit of the Pleiades at fixed star Alcyon. So there's a lot of really heightened sensitivity to the things like the Schumann and the current of the natural world and the natural rhythm and Ceres, asteroid Ceres, you don't see it on this chart. She's at the very last degree of Aries now, um, 29 degrees, sorry, pretty close, which is attunement to natural universal rhythm. So the goddess of the grain and agriculture, um, the representation of the aspect of the planet that nourishes us and gives us what we need, but also represents the seasonal cycles that are necessary. It's also in this position today of, um, and will be in a sextile to this uh, Aquarius moon um, at the same time that it meets Jupiter, right? The butterfly emerging from the chrysalis. Wow. Um, and it's so important that we really connect into the more universal and specifically the planetary rhythms because that's going to assist us through this process. And like I said, the Schumann keeps, let's just look at it real quick. I want to show you. So when you see the Schumann um, chart like this, when it comes into white, that represents, you can see it right here that it's spiking. And so this was the second, this is the third. Yesterday was a big one. It was huge. Um, it hit up to 92 hertz, you know, when it's at a baseline of seven to eight hertz. That's a big shift. And then we come into today and it's still um, blasting and peaking, but you can tell that it's starting to taper just a little bit, not quite as high as it was yesterday. That was a big one. It was a huge, huge blast. And that was the third quarter moon squaring the sun, sun squaring Saturn. There was a lot of things that, um, that came into uh, cross purposes yesterday and uh, forced a shift in trajectory. It forced in a shift in perspective. And if we are allowing ourselves to align with the planetary rhythm, it will mitigate in some ways this process, um, not entirely because we still have to feel it and experience it. You know, it's one thing to know something is coming. It's another thing entirely to experience it in the moment. And um, there's no amount of planning and preparation that you can have for that type of thing, but at least expecting it. And then when you start experiencing it, you can know what to do. So if you've had the ringing in the ears, headaches, uh, a lot of pressure in, um, in your body and you're, and you're just exhausted. Do what you need to do to rest because it takes real energy to recover from these huge spikes. And if you are feeling the euphoria or you've, your container was full as a result of this and it's stretched it out when it comes down off again, take the time you know, do it's, you're not doing nothing by taking care of yourself. Um, it's, it's essential and it's important to do so, but you can see how much it has spiked, um, in the last two days. And so, um, it's coming back down and there was a very large coronal mass ejection that did leave the sun around the second or third 
And so sometimes, too, there is a correlation between the solar activity and the Schumann, but it's not exclusive, right? It's not just the solar activity. There are um, connections between tectonic plates and movements and earthquakes and stuff connected to the Schumann resonance as well. Again, it's the heartbeat of the planet. So anything that is impacting the planet and all of the systems of the planet are going to increase the heart rate, just like within us, right? So just take some time. Take some time to take care of yourself. Now let's go back to the chart, shall we? Okay, we talked about here um, the moon coming into a conjunction with Jupiter today at, and, and a sextile, right? A 60 degree angle, an investment opportunity as well with Ceres. It's connecting to the planetary rhythm. Um, that Earth star chakra is really important right now. And now that Venus is coming into the Pleiades, um, it's also really important to allow our sensitivity to connect to this place as well. Mercury in its home sign of Gemini and Alcyon is also, um, you can, the, the, uh, the realm of the mind, communication, information, manifestation is all coming into, um, focus right now. One second. Okay. Okay. So what else is happening today? Uh, let me look here and oh yeah, the moon is going to actually be, you can see it right now is going to be in a square to Venus in Taurus today. So that, that Aquarius moon is really making it, um, it, that it's like that, that wormhole is in us. It's what we're experiencing in real time. It's the feeling that we have and in a square to Venus that is making us incredibly sensitive to the world around us. Um, you know, transmutating our emotional energies is really the, what we're going to get out of that square today, as much as it's going to be very uncomfortable because, um, on one hand with Venus in this position, um, is really identifying herself with the, with the planetary rhythms almost exclusively, right? She becomes, you know, the space in which we can all come together. Um, and so in a square to the moon in Aquarius, these fixed squares have not been easy on us, but they also are giving us um, a lot of new perspective on how to feel um, on, a, on a sense level and an intuitive level with the moon and, um, sh you know, giving us an opportunity to experience what it's like to live in these two places at the same time, which again is where Eris you know, the, the dwarf planet Eris that's out beyond Pluto, the goddess of chaos. She's sitting at this 25 degrees of Aries as well. That's representing existing in two places at once. It's the chaos in, the, in life that also is the precursor to balance, of course, um, universally, right? Entropy always leaves back to homeostasis. It is the, it is the natural rhythm of this universe and the goddess of chaos. She rolls that apple in and causes a big, you know, causes the chaos, causes the disruption. But at the, if we are able to see the lesson for what it is and find the balance, which is having two feet in one location. And that's really what inspired the title of this transmission is that, you know, there's a lot of flow right now in this, in the intuitive energy, in the reading that I picked up on this morning. There's a lot of, it's, it's all across the board, very emotional, very feeling based, very intuitive, um, the flow within us. And then you have the two shores, which are seemingly opposites, but they're both the same shore, you know, the shores of the same river. And as we progress over time here, over this next month with Mercury in Gemini getting closer, we'll meet the North Node before the new, the next new moon, and then start to come into the Orion constellation, therefore activating the Orion star seeds. This, this dynamic is going to be really, really important to master. And the Orion star seeds are going to really need to start stepping forward even more and it's important to know where these aspects are in your own chart as an Orion starseed because it is Orion that allows us to live within the duality um, and see it as a benefit, see it as an opportunity to sharpen our skill sets and our technical skills and our our ability to analyze information. That's the thing is that Mercury also rules Virgo, the feminine aspect, because Mercury is very androgynous. It's non-binary. 
in terms of a gender. Um, and, and Mercury and Hermes has always been characterized as this type of, um, uh, I wouldn't say genderless, it's more just non-binary. It, it, you know, Mercury rules Gemini, Mercury rules Virgo. And the Virgo aspect of Mercury is the analysis. So, which is where asteroid Vesta is right now, right on Alpha Draconis, um, really, you know, conditioning us and supporting us in our discipline and our purification process of this really incredibly potent, powerful leadership energy that the Dracos have a represent and have and hold right and it's a lot of draco star seeds end up in positions of power because that reptilian serpent energy and that serpent medicine is incredibly powerful and you can do things with it um and but at a lower you know if you don't get out of the lower 4d with it then that's when you know you have this reptilian type of aspect that's in charge that's really about self-preservation and control and manipulation so the draco aspect is being so strongly aspected right now by vesta that is getting those star seeds that are about you know wanting to move out of that space and use that really incredible energy for uh for good for the light is she's really supporting that process but it is very um you know, requires a lot of discipline and, and, and mastery of self and a really strong ability to look, take a good hard look at yourself in the mirror, um, and see where you are. Who oh boy. Um, v I have this star seed marking in a specific spot. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it, but I remember when this was the case, um, it was in a, you know, there, this came back around, uh, for me, not that long ago, a couple of years ago. And it was, you have to look in yourself in the mirror you have to be very real with yourself and see where you, where you interact with this. Anyway, um, there's just so much happening here. It seems like that I could just go on forever about this, but for today specifically, the moon is going to exit Aquarius. It's going to come into Pisces, which is where she's really uh, much more familiar with that territory. And this is a possibility to really just diffuse ourselves, um, almost too much, especially when she comes to meet Neptune. And we'll talk about that soon. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of interesting energy today. So let's look at some fixed star stuff. Number one, um, I think this is really interesting where we have, uh, the sun is in a conjunction with Almac and then, um, let's see here, Almac and then Menkar, which is the nose of the sea monster. And then also the, um, the foot of Andromeda, the chained woman. So let's talk about that for a second, because these two aspects, um, have to do with having faith and they also have to do with being aware of, hmm. First of all, Almac is the foot of Andromeda, where she was chained to the rock and then was left as a sacrifice to the Kraken, right? And then Perseus comes along with the head of Medusa and turns the Kraken to stone. So this is a whole, you know, mythical, archetypal construct here to, to show us about let, you know, when this part of ourselves comes through and uh, separates the head of our, of our own monster and then uses that as a as a means to really address the the very deeply hidden um monster under the surface of the collective unconscious then we can be released and andromeda was the the bait essentially um and perseus came and saved her so faith in divine in divine help right because she stood there and um accepted what was happening with fullness you know with grace and um uh she had faith in divine help and so the that's where the sun is today the sun is at this last position here where um it seems like all is lost and that we will in fact be sacrificing ourselves on some level um just like andromeda was meant to be a sacrifice to the kraken um and this is that moment before the seed breaks open and uh, this is important to keep in mind because again, it's going to feel on a some level that we are we are giving ourselves up, and really, what we 
what we can do is brave the storm in some ways. Now we, like I said, so we have Almac and right next to it is Menkar, which is the, the nose of the Kraken, right? And so there is, also to this connection to being pulled towards what we think we want this collective unconscious desire pulling us towards something and it was a, it was a trap essentially um it wasn't exactly what the kraken thought it was going to be and in fact it was rendered completely destroyed by um and turned to stone by looking at the um the head of medusa the representation of the trauma that turns us into a beast and so Whoo boy. Yeah, there's just a lot that's going to be coming out um, and coming onto the surface today. And then with Mercury, like I said, zero degrees Gemini in conjunction with Alcyon. So here is the Pleiades star cluster in the shoulder of the bull. And Alcyon is, in fact, the brightest of the Pleiades cluster. She is the daughter of Atlas. So the Pleiadian star cluster, um, in terms of Greek mythology, was um, play, the seven sisters, and it's all over the world. Every culture, right, has something to do with the Pleiades and the seven sisters. They were immortalized and protected by being put into the sky because, oh, Orion, that's interesting, the warrior um, was chasing after them and Jupiter or Zeus put them in the sky to protect them. Now, their father was also Atlas. If you remember, Atlas was holding up the, you know, the the world on his shoulders. And so the Pleiades have this sorrowful, sorrowful, sorrowful type of energy connected to him, uh, especially in ancient astrology, using fixed stars to be very indicative of future markers. Um, there's eyesight and blindness and those types of things are incorporated when the Pleiadians and Alcyon especially are in the natal chart in a, in a specific, uh, in a specific position. But Alcyon, she's the brightest and she is the main daughter, you know, the oldest daughter of Atlas. And so there is a lot of ambition. Um, and this, this star really does raise people to higher positions. Um, and, but can just as easily break them down as well as, uh, you know, Atlas, right. Had all this responsibility to holding the world on his shoulders. But at the end of the day, it was, um, a huge burden and his, and his daughters had to stand by and watch that. And so the sorrow and the deep connection to another person's um, experience sounds a lot like empathy and the Pleiadian star seeds, they are very empathic as a result of their ability to connect, um, very directly to the planetary rhythms, to natural rhythms, to each other. Um, the Pleiadian star seeds are, um, very open and they tend to have really poor boundaries. So Mercury here, um, is, you know, giving us this mental capacity really to see all of this that has just gone through in the in the Pleiadian star cluster with a completely different um set of a, diff, a different perspective now. Mercury is at home now in in its home sign of Gemini and so now it's much more about the um instead of feeling it all and being attuned to it, now it's starting to come into this um, ability to analyze the information, to take in both sides of the information, to not be as emotionally drawn into the situation as much as the Pleiadian aspect. So this is something that's going to be very important to consider um, as we move forward, is this ability to not become emotionally involved um, and to realize that it's all projection back and forth. If you take it personally, then you are emotionally connected to it and you are not seeing it for what it is, which is the two shores of the same river. We want to stay on the river flowing down um, instead of getting pulled onto one side or the other. Because, And I would really caution people that if you are engaged or consuming any content in, in terms of social media or any kind of video, anything, any news, anything like that, if to, to really deeply consider all narratives that, that are working to divide all of them. And even if they seem on the surface, like they are supposed that they are there to, um, warn people or to help people to be safe. Remember that if it, there's, if it is, creating a divide specifically um, 
that it, you should really deeply consider it and not, you know, allow yourself necessarily to go to one shore or the other, um, it, but to stay on the river. Because um, this is the flow is where um, we're going to really, hmm, the flow is really where we're going to get, um, we're going to be the most successful. As soon as we're pulled to one side or the other, then you're entrenched, right? So, you know, get back onto the river, get back onto the river, because that's where we're really going to get the most accurate information and get to our destination. So let me see if there's anything else. No, not for this moment. Um, and like I said, the moon's going to come into Pisces. So it's not going to be hard to really just completely submerge ourselves onto that river at the same time in terms of the way that our consciousness is um, reflected back to us. OK, so let's look at the reading today, because that is um, going to show us how much this is very emotional um, for as much as it's Aquarian and Taurus, you know, you know, fixed earth, fixed air. Um, but that moon coming into Pisces is really going to set the tone. OK, so here's our reading for today. Um, across the board, the hor horizon horizon of our consciousness, the horizontal axis of cause and effect here, it's all water. Queen of Cups reversed, the Four of Cups reversed, and then the Ace of Cups. So where we go with this is a, a, an opening, right? A new emotional capacity that is coming forward as a result of some really uncomfortable, um, um, really uncomfortable and certainly not very well... <laughs> Not very well balanced emotional things, and we'll get into that. But the the rise, the vertical axis of our power here has a lot to do really with um, again letting go of the game, like I just talked about, um, and we're able to do that. And there's there's um, some guidance here that's bringing us back to um, the bifurcation and being out of alignment with these polarities only you know pulling on one side or the other and then being really attuned to the more subtle aspects um about where we're headed and maybe trusting trusting our own intuition and trusting our gut and trusting our deep reflection rather than um again getting caught up i mean to think that there is not continued psychological operations still being put out there is is naive in my opinion. So the best way to be able to know that that's happening is to tune into our gut, tune into our intuition and our, and our, you know, that, that deep psychic channel that cancer represents Mars is in cancer, um, and is in a position right now where that's, it's really about tuning into the somewhat hidden forces, um, which is, you know, Mars is at least cardinal, cardinal fire and being in a cardinal water sign it's in its fall position but wow we can learn so much from this from this time with mars and cancer if we allow um if we allow ourselves to you know really protect use it, use mars as a protector of what's important to us and and where we feel we belong and where our loyalty lies as well that's something that for as much as mars is losing power in cancer can really be very healing and also very protective so let's go through this one piece at a time here. So the Queen of Cups is our causal um, aspect right now, and I will say is reversed. So already the Queen of Cups we know is like a transmitter and a trans and a transformer. Um, uh, you can barely see that there is even a humanoid figure in this card. You can see her face kind of right here. So the Queen of Cups is the Queen of the Thrones of Water, right? This is completely um, translucent. This is completely a transformer um, and a perfect transformer. And so in reverse, and this is us, right? These are actual people, um, either us or other people in our lives. This is really representing us as actual people. And when it's reversed like this, this is, I mean, it's already, it's already, the Queen of Cups is already a mirror, right? She's a mirror. She's reflecting back through her ability to hold that mirror back to us. And so when she's reversed um, as people, not only is she crossing the bounds, oh, I'm, I am really feeling this just just FYI in terms of my own personal experience, just to give you some, you know, give you a sense of how this could possibly be experienced like this 
Queen of Cups is, you know, moving in and out of reality um, and fantasy in a lot of ways. It's very dreamy. Um, and again, moon coming into Pisces. Ooh, boy, this is going to happen tonight. Um, and so this again, when it is reversed, it's already, there's already no boundary here whatsoever. And so reversal makes it very unreliable um, and, and not very consistent. There's a lot of weakness here. Um, there can be a lot of thoughtlessness. And when it's reversed, the queen is reversed. And it's um, tuning into any direction and getting really lost really lost in the dream world. So diffusion, spinning around. Um, this is really strong causal factor coming into this moment that we're all on some level really struggling with um, being grounded, um, being thoughtful. I'm sure Mercury is going to help this, but this is really talking about our own emotional capacity right now and um, being just open to whatever comes in when it's reversed like this and having and not realizing that it's being, you know, it's reflecting something back to us. Um, it also can be an experience that's way more internal when these cards are reversed like this, that it's much more of a internalized, subtle experience. And boy, when you have something like the water of water being a very subtle experience with the moon coming into Pisces, it's it's hard to know the difference between where we end and others begin. When where and where do we find ourselves at the heart of the moment with this? The four of cups reversed. This is already, again, this card upright is already a moment that is uh, you know, in its security of the moon in Cancer, of the moon in Cancer, luxury, the four of cups, even in its security, it's, it's already in its essence showing us that there's only, only, um, only disappointment coming, right? Because the five of cups, that's what it is, disappointment. Um, so the luxury is a momentary experience. And when it's the four of cups, when it's reversed, I mean, it's, it's, there's resistance or we're holding on to it. And I would say, or, or often the dark side of cancer is like Munchausen syndrome territory. Okay. The dark side of cancer is manipulation in order to get other people to need you, right? That is the dark side of the cancer archetype. Um, and this is where this is important to realize that there is a dark side to and shadow side to all of these archetypes. So when it's, when it's reversed, there is a sense of possessiveness and a um, an intention that is not of the highest order, but it's meant to fulfill that need to need needed or that seeming need to be needed. Um, and restriction, restriction in order to satisfy that that self, restriction of other people. And so again, the Munchausen syndrome or even just like, um, you know, you can really, the gaslighting seems to be much more of a Leo energy potentially, but also too, this is very underhanded um, and is very controlling and manipulative on an emotional level when it's, when it's reversed. So we have this energy of this really diffused, um, you know, really having a hard time staying within the boundaries. And then we come here to this four of cups where not only is it secure just for this moment, we know that there's something coming, but it's also really that we're, we're really resisting letting go. Um, or at the same time, we really, again, there's no boundary here. The moon loves to be in cancer because cancer does represent a boundary, but there's no boundary with us when we're coming into this moment. And so, um, we may be grasping for some boundary. We may be trying to hold things tight in order to keep this sense of um, protection and love. And, you know, Mars definitely will act on things like that. But as you see, we have this potential here to really come into a new seed point um, and uh, a desire for a new relationship. So how do we get there? Well, it's about our power um, and the axis of our power. The three of keys reversed, exiting the chess game, exit the board entirely. When it's upright, you are just aware of the fact that there's this political dualistic game happening. When it's reversed like this, this is showing us, especially at our energetic root, to just walk away. And like I said, if you are engaged with any type of information 
decision right now, as much as it seems like it may be the right thing, it is it reinforcing reinforcing um, protection or uh, reinforcing protection, right? If we don't know, if, if we are drifting in and out of the boundaries here of reality as the Queen of Cups and coming into this moment where we're trying to find some sort of um, boundary or containment for our emotional vulnerability, um, if we do not realize that we are... Um, where the boundaries of this chess game are, then yeah, we're not going to be able to really activate this new emotional seed point um, and this desire for a new type of relationship, either with ourselves and the world, and I would say with each other. But it requires that we exit the game completely. And when you are engaged in a type of thought process that put, pits you against a whole other group of people and pick your pick your poison, I mean... <laughs> you know, along any identity line. And I would even argue now um, in terms of things like the, you know, the type of medical interventions that we choose for ourselves, that's even being used um, as a way to separate us. And maybe there's information going out there that is actually more damaging than not when it comes to who should be able to be around other people. It's just an idea, right? So, this is about exiting the game entirely, right? Realizing that they are two shores of the same river or waterway that we are flowing down. And if we get caught up in the game, then we're not flowing down the river. We're on one shore or the other and we're just like, you are the bad guy. No, you are the bad guy. I gotta stay away from you. We wanna be on, we wanna be flowing down the river. That's where we want to be. And part of that is exiting this dualistic nature, um, which is going to, oh, wow. This is, this is where the Orion aspect is going to be so, so powerful in the coming weeks, right? Being able to stay emotionally in the center, right? And being able, but at the same time, being able to actively and fully and mentally engage with the duality um, in order to manifest something. So, we have this exiting of the game where our conscious awareness um, and our attention can really, you know, if we really engage here in reflection, which again, pulls us right back down um, into the still waters. Remember our full moon, right? The, the, this is exactly what the full moon Sabian symbol, right? A calm lake bathed in moonlight, full moon, moonlight. We can see the full moon upon this lake. The lake is our emotional waters, our emotional landscape. Underneath the surface is all of the aspects that we don't often engage with because they're under the water. So if we can bring our institutional power, right, our conscious awareness and our attention and focus on this deep reflection, do we know the difference between our emotional compulsions and our actual intuitive voice. And as we're going to see with some of this guidance, that's, that's a big part of it here. Knowing the difference between our intuitive voice, our guidance system, and the emotional compulsions that pull us back into lack, into victimhood, into worry, into all of these things that are very normal part of the human psyche, but keep us from actually getting into a much deeper um, intuitive look at where we're going and who we are, because when we don't do that, then we are susceptible to the psychological operations, to manip emotional manipulation. And then we start to do things like, you know, pull in or inappropriately try to hold this um, containment for ourselves or with other people when it's not actually, you know, it's, it's holding us back and it will find its balance and its homeostasis regardless, right? Regardless, you can hold it all day, but that'll be, it'll find its way to express itself um, elsewhere. So this reflection, right? Knowing the difference, consciously aware of the difference between our emotional compulsions and that disturbance of the water and our actual intuitive, deep intuitive voice that we get when the calm, when the waters are calm and we get a very accurate, clear reflection of the moon with the light of the sun, right? There was that full moon. So we're still working with that energy right now and it's just right on the surface now. And as you see here, this with these aspects in mind, this Ace of Cups, a new emotional perspective, right? This is the way, you know, into our soul. 
this cup. I mean, look, you can see here that it's in some ways, I really like how there is the, um, a, a spider web type of energy emitting from this chalice. And then on the bottom, it's much more of like a wave. Um, and it's being, you know, it's got this, um, it's got this wormhole type of portal energy coming in from both sides, right? This looks like a brain to me. It does. It looks like brain tissue in some ways. And then you have um, the, the top of the chalice with the energy coming in. I mean, this is being filled with the spirit so much that it, you know, it fills our emotional capacity. This is the beginning of the suit of the cups of the water. And this is very Cancerian, especially considering the first Deccan or the first um, two, three, and four of, of the water of the cups are ruled, it's ruled by the first, second, and third Deccan of Cancer. So we want to be able to hold this. We want a new emotional perspective and we want our emotional capacity to be full of something new, right? The ace is new. It hasn't been, you know, substantiated in any way yet. It is just new. Um, it's inspiration, right? It's love. It's a desire for a relationship. It's the source of love that really opens us up to um, even wanting something new in the way of a friendship relationship on an emotional level. So there's some really good support here for this process today as we as we go through our day. So the light of the world, right? Number 10, this is um, a cycle ending in some ways with the number 10, and this is our higher self knocking at the door. Um, so are we able to answer it or are we distracted? So, I mean, you can see here that the window is at least open. So there's an openness to this. Um, the, here is our magical cat. As anybody knows, the cats are like a fourth dimensional creature. Um, and the feline is very connected to Lyra and the um, Lyran starseed uh, archetype. So very magical. And cat's like, hey, dude, like, are you going to open the door or what? And the dude's like, what are you talking about? You know, like looking down at the cat, the cat's like, hey. Um, and then here's our higher self, right? You got the halo around the, the hermit or the sage is carrying the lantern, looking back at us, smiling, giving a knock. Are we going to open the door? Are we going to open the door to our higher self? Um, we cannot do that when our two aspects of ourselves are out of balance, right? Again, out of balance means that we're still kind of engaging in an either or scenario with this chess game. Somebody else's political, um, somebody else's political aspect, um, somebody else's political game that we're participating in. So the Cardinal is um, giving us this opportunity to get our physical and spiritual aspects back into equilibrium. And so again, it's, it's I put one foot on the ground and you have one foot in um the sky or in the spirit world or whatever however you make sense of that um you don't want to be this is where a lot of us are is just like floating around and not even grounded in reality right now um and just you know picking up anything that is you know shot at us basically um in terms of intuitive psychic astral type of stuff now this whatever you need to do to get grounded so going out in nature is a, is you know we'll do that putting your feet on the ground um doing something very grounding um like making food and eating will really actually bring your energy back down to this reality eating food um this is why fasting is uh, such a um, is such a strong practice, effective practice in terms of a spiritual progression, because when you fast, not only is it having all these really beneficial health impacts on your body in terms of your metabolism, being able to, um, you know, do its job on detoxing as opposed to breaking down food. So that's one thing. But the other thing is, is when you, your energy is not focused on digesting food. And so you tend to be able to access these higher realms more easily, more readily when you are not eating. So eating actually will ground you um, to a certain extent. So that's something um, 
you know, doing very physical activities um, will ground you. And but I'm not saying that you pull yourself completely away. But if you want to be able to exit the game, right, if you want to identify that you are not participating in somebody else's chess game necessarily, and you want to let in this higher wisdom that's knocking, you have to find the way to bring these polarity points together. And it's going to come through our emotional ability to ride down stream, right? Be in our raft. Um, the Schumann res Resonance, Magenta Pixie talks about it as the Crystal River. This is a great way to look at it as well. We want to ride this flow this current rather than trying to hold on to it and certainly we don't want to drown and that's the other thing about this queen of cups here we can just like totally drown and diffuse ourselves into this medium as well and we have to live on earth right now that's why we're here is to be part of this process not to live in these upper realms and bypass everything so that's you know when you hear about spiritual bypassing that's a big part of it is to just stay in these upper realms and not actually be on the ground so speaking of that uh the mouse here as a um a guidance point right to support us in our reflection our deep reflection the mouse it's saying you're looking overlooking important details so pay closer attention to what's going on definitely i would also say that the mouse is so directly connected to the earth um physically right they're so low to the ground and small and uh also, the mouse is so tuned into any subtle shifts and changes um, because it's needed for survival. It's a survival mechanism for the mouse to be very in tune with all the subtle changes and rhythms. And so this coming out is really a strong support for our ability to, if we want to deeply reflect um, and get something out of that. Um, at, we have to be able to cultivate this um, ability to um pick up on very subtle changes, very subtle changes. And this is why, you know, the gut, trusting your gut, it'll tell you just like the mouse, the mouth, the mouse is acting on instinct, you know? So, um, but is also very in tune to the subtle shifts. And this is, this goes along with being in tune to the natural rhythms, you know, Venus now in coming into conjunction with the Pleiades in her home sign, she can really do this for us in terms of not do it for us, but, um, our sensitivity to the natural rhythms is going to get really, really strong. And the empathic ability that the Pleiadian star seeds hold is going to become something very palpable. Um, and so we want to be in tune to the subtle energies without taking them on as our own. And along with that, the one of scrolls, I mean, this is Mercury coming into Gemini, number one of scrolls on track, right? We are on track and we have to trust that we're on track in our mind. And um, again, that track is like the river riding the current, but in our mind, but we have to get in the boat and go as well. Um, and feel all the subtleties of the the stream of consciousness that we're on or the stream of the river or the crystal river if we want to think about it as the schumann resonance you know being sensitive to all of the shifts and changes in that flow but from a mental perspective you know to know that we're on track um and to be secure in that allows the stillness um you know it's not it's not disturbing the stillness of this of this um of this flow of this body of water of this river that we are all flowing down together and if we trust that we're on track and our and our on our trajectory on a mental level is um on that track then we can actually tune into some of the more subtle aspects um in our reflection um of ourselves and what's going on outside of us as well so um, there's something really beautiful to look forward to. This Ace of Cups is just really a beautiful opening to a new friendship, new relationship. It's a desire. It's a desire for love, like the, the Cancerian love of these really tight bonds um, that allow us all to feel safe and allow us all to... Um, uh, to develop our, our character and our self-esteem. That, that is a healthy home. That is a healthy... Um, sense of of 
connection. And the fourth house, you know, it's home and family. It's our regional identity, our tribal identity. And um, for all of the the negative aspect that the word nationalism um, has now triggered in people, it really is about patriotism. Um, and it doesn't matter which country you're from um, or what um, nation you identify with, but it is, that is what it represents, being patriotic to that particular identity or that group of individuals that you identify with as the matrix of what holds all of us. And remember, the United States is a cancer sun. It's a cancer sun. It's actually a cancer sun at uh, Sirius and Mars. Oh boy, when Mars crosses Sirius soon, that's going to be that's going to be something else. Oh man, I can't wait to talk about that in more detail. I think that's going to be very significant actually. So Guys, that is the transmission for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate every single one of you. If you are interested in um, a reading, booking, energy work, um, if you want to find Catalyst Energies on social media, description box below. Everything you need is in the description box below that you can reach out. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll see you tomorrow on the daily. And just uh, remember, Beltane is here now, um, coming into 15 degrees of Taurus, and that seed cracks open. So look at that beautiful, beautiful um, possibility of new love, friendship, and relationship that is going to come out of that. It's, it's really um, making my heart swell for as much as it's also really distracting um, energetically and um, astrally right now. So guys, take care of yourselves. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.